What's up guys, Gray here, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the loadouts and builds that I'm gonna be taking into the day one raid tomorrow. I know there's plenty of videos out there like this, but I wanted to go over the builds that me and my group put together last night. We all got together, talked about Warlocks, Titans, and Hunters, what weapons we recommend bringing. So I'm just gonna go over it real quick. We'll go through each class. Promise this won't be like a half hour video or anything like that. Just gonna touch on the mods and subclasses that you might want to bring as well as some exotics and weapons that you're definitely going to want to have on your characters if you're planning on attempting this day one raid tomorrow. So we're going to start off by taking a look at my hunter. But real quick, I want to toss it out there. We will be live streaming the entire day one raid tomorrow on my Twitch channel. So if you want to be a part of it, want to come hang out, be sure to go follow me on Twitch. Will be links down in the description. Would love to see you over there. Going to be so much fun. Love these day one raids. Cannot wait to dive into the raid tomorrow. So hope to see you over there. Let's start off and take a look at the hunter here. First, I'm going to talk about weapons because it's going to be kind of universal across all your characters, at least ones that you're going to want to have ready. So we're going to take a look at the kinetic slot first. You definitely want to have some sort of sniper rifle, some sort of good special weapon that can do damage. You want to have something up to level and you only need to have it above 1530 power level. Remember that day one raid is capped at 1530 for contest mode and that includes artifact power this time around. So even if you're not quite there, if your artifact is pushing you above 1530, you'll be good to go. So definitely want a good kinetic special weapon Always recommend having a blinding grenade launcher here as well for ad control. There's probably going to be some big ad based encounter, usually like the entrance to the raid sort of operates this way. Then you want to make sure you have good champion weapons as well. This is rumored to be a scorn raid, so we're not going to have anti barrier champions if there's any champions at all, but we'll definitely have overload or unstoppable. So having something to handle that as well is going to be good to have. I recommend bringing Arbalist because you never know what you might run into. If you have room for that exotic slot in your kinetic, you can use Arbalist for breaking shields. And Osteostriga is an absolute staple. It's going to be a beast in this raid for ad clear. Definitely pick this up. Unfortunately, it is locked behind the deluxe edition of Witch Queen right now. So hopefully you have it because it is an absolute beast for ad clear. As far as energy weapons go, Obviously, the huge thing right now is void primary weapons. You want to have something like this funnel web. This thing is an absolute beast. I can't believe I got this roll before the day one raid. It's got perpetual motion, adrenaline junkie. Really excited to try this out. But any void primary will do something like gnawing hunger. I've talked about this in some of my build videos. These are great weapons for this entire season. They'll be really strong in the raid as well with volatile rounds. They're going to be amazing. You also want to make sure you have some special weapons here as well, like Null Composure is great for DPS. Cartesian Coordinate is another really good one. You might need a good Slug Shotgun. These do really good damage if you have Divinity on the boss, if you can get close enough for Slug Shotgun damage, they do incredible DPS. And then I also recommend having a Blinding Grenade Launcher here as well. When it comes to the heavy weapons, this is where things get a little hairy because there's a lot of options. Obviously, Galahorn is going to be a massive part of this day one raid, but you only need one person in your fire team running Gallarhorn because it's going to give everybody those wolf pack rounds. So you want to make sure you have another rocket launcher ready to go. Something like this Code Duello that has field prep lasting impression. This will be great, does big damage with lasting impression, or have a good void launcher like this Royal Entry has impulse clown cartridge combined with the wolf pack rounds from Gallarhorn. That's going to be a really good contender too. Things like Parasite will be great for some of those ad clear challenging encounters where you need to have, if there's going to be champions or big majors, this thing can absolutely chunk them down. So it may be worth having as well. It does huge burst DPS. Xenophage is always a good one to have ready for some of the puzzle mechanics you may run into. And then I recommend having a good LMG for ad clear as well. I would recommend a void one again with volatile rounds. going to be fantastic to have ready on you. These are just some of the weapons I'm planning on having on my character. I obviously have some other ones ready to go. If you haven't already, I recommend just taking any blue drops, anything above 1530, throw it in the vault. Just start tossing it in the vault right now. You may get to an encounter where you're like, man, I really need some obscure exotic or some obscure weapon. At least you have something laying around to infuse it up for, to contest mode levels. So that's going to do it for the weapons. Let's go ahead and take a look at the loadout and exotics I'm bringing for my hunter. 
I will be maining my hunter for the day one attempt with my group. And I'm going to be running Void Hunter. Obviously, this is all the rage right now, but it's really, really strong. I'm going to be taking Mobius Quiver. This is the new DPS super for hunters. It does massive damage. And if we combine that with Orpheus Rigs, we get a third shot out of our super. That bumps our damage output massively. So Orpheus Rig is a huge one to have. I also recommend having omni oculus ready to go because this is a great survivability exotic if your team needs it if there's areas you need to run past some crazy stuff puzzles just general survivability omni is a great one to have as well to invis your team have two of those smoke bombs great utility so those are the two main exotics i'm going to be bringing and then as far as mods it's going to be really the mods i've talked about in my past couple build videos the Volatile Flow, Elemental Armaments, Elemental Ordnance, so we can get those Void Elemental Wells. Highly recommend bringing Well of Tenacity. Every time you pick up those Void Wells, it's going to give you the damage resistance for a brief duration. Can be the difference between life or death. And a little trick I've been sharing with everyone is if you can, bring a Void Chest Piece. Because of this seasonal mod, Thermoshock Plating, this gives you Solar and Arc damage resistance. And if you need it, you can also throw on void resistance so you have all three elements covered here i love this mod this season and it's really really clutch if you throw it on a void chest piece you can have everything covered here and if you don't need it you can just swap it out for something like concussive dampener that's the general rundown for my hunter mobius quiver orpheus rigs and omni oculus i am gonna have dim links for all my loadouts for titan warlock and hunter down in the description so if you need a quick glanced loadout just to copy over to your character go ahead and follow those links. Let's take a look at my Warlock because things get a little unique with Warlock in day one raids. All right, popping over to the Warlock. This is where things get a little bit interesting because Warlocks are always going to bring that Well of Radiance. If you have multiple Warlocks on your team, you might be able to get away with running a Void 3.0 build for add clear and damage. But our team, for example, we are bringing three Warlocks. We're gonna have two Well of Radiances maybe even three if we really need it, but it's always gonna be a staple on any day one team. But we have some of the mods this season, everything's really centered around those void mods and void 3.0. We can take advantage of a little bit of that, but I adapted this build to make it work for a Well of Radiance Warlock, so we can still get things like Volatile Rounds and Well of Tenacity for damage reduction. So we'll talk about that real quick. Obviously, if you're running well, you're going to want to bring something like Phoenix Protocol. This is going to give you your well back as long as people are standing inside of it. Getting kills, great way to maintain those wells of Radiance, be able to cycle through multiple Warlocks so you always have one up for your team. You may also consider bringing something like Lunafaction Boots. Those have come in clutch. Like in Deepstone Crypt, Lunafaction Boots were make or break for that raid. They made all the difference on the final boss encounter. So not a bad idea to have laying around as well. And of course, something like the Necrotic Grips. You can't go wrong with this on your Warlock, especially if you're pairing it with Osteostriga. You will be the absolute ad clear champion. So if there's a more ad clear focused encounter, you can swap off Phoenix Protocol put on Necrotic Grip and just be an ad clear Chad. But we'll talk about the mods real quick because it gets a little bit different. We can't really use things like Elemental Ordnance because we're on a solar subclass and we're still not using solar weapons for things like Font of Might. So we have to adapt it a little bit. We're still gonna use Volatile Flow because all of our teammates will still be generating void Elemental Wells. We can pick those up, get Volatile Rounds. That will still work but I'm also using elemental charge so that anytime there is a well of radiance, it does give me charge with light. I am still going to use protective light on this warlock build. Gives us a little bit of pocket damage resistance. I know it's been nerfed. I know it's not as good as it used to be, but it's not a bad option to run here. And high energy fire doesn't stack with well of radiance if it's your well. You could use high energy fire if you're standing in someone else's well. There's some things you can move around there. And again, I am still going to use Well of Tenacity. We're doubling down on damage reduction because the Well of Radiance Warlock is crucial to your team. You don't want to die, leave your team stranded during a DPS phase. You want to make sure you live. So picking up wells will give us charge with light. Well of Tenacity will give us massive damage reduction on top of it. You can see I do also have high energy fire slotted in here. If we're standing in an allies well of radiance, 
we can take advantage of that if we're charged with light. You want to make sure you have 100 disciplines so you can be tossing out those healing grenades, keeping your allies alive, really playing that support build, the highest recov possible so you can be constantly dropping healing rifts as well, keeping everyone alive, getting those supers going. That's what this build is going to be all about for the Warlocks. You can obviously move things around if your team doesn't need this. Like, like during Vaults of Glass, I actually ran Chaos Reach Warlock because it was great for ad clear on the final boss. During Atheon, it was very clutch to clear out all the supplicants after the damage phase. So you can move things around. You can do stuff like that. This is just the base build that I would recommend bringing on your Warlock to start. All right, taking a look at our Titan, things will be a little bit different here because there has been some changes to the Titan Super. The Ward of Dawn bubble has been nerfed. It doesn't give as much of a damage bonus as it used to. It's down to 25%, but Banner Shield got a buff. It's actually up to 40% increased weapon damage when your allies are shooting through it. So that's definitely going to be something to keep in mind if you're running Void Titan in this raid, which you should be. If you're on Titan, definitely be on Void 3.0. So you can have the bubble if you need it. Banner Shield, if you need it, be buffing your allies, giving them that increased damage. Pairing with that, we are going to use things like Bastion, where our barricade is going to give overshield to us and our allies when they're nearby, add to their survivability a little bit, control demolition, throwing out grenades, get big explosions, clearing out adds. That's going to be the general rundown for Sentinel. I did just do a video going over Void 3.0 Titans. Feel free to check that out. Go a little more in depth with the whole subclass, but that's the general breakdown for it. Looking at the weapons, going to be very, very similar here. You're going to want an all void loadout. Talking Royal Entry, Gnawing Hunger. These will be great things to start with. You can't go wrong bringing these in the raid to start. Obviously, things are going to change. We don't know what we're getting into. But the exotic you're going to want to bring is actually Precious Scars. This thing is so slept on. You don't see it used a lot, but it's amazing in high-end PvE. Final blows from weapons with a damage type matching your subclass create a burst of healing around you and after reviving or being revived you gain an aura that provides overshields to you and nearby allies revives will be happening left and right you're always going to be getting void elemental kills healing allies giving them overshields you will be the absolute support tank running the general void mods we've got font of might melee well maker elemental ordinance volatile flow and Well of Tenacity, all about survivability and huge damage from volatile rounds on our Void weapons. Again, following up on that reminder, there will be dim loadout links in the description and the pinned comment, so feel free to click those. I tried to make them easy, didn't pull my ghosts and ships, so you can just copy these mods over, make it work for your character, and copy them over. Obviously, guys, a couple disclaimers. We don't know what's going to be inside of this raid. Some of these weapons could change. You may need something completely different. You never really know. These are just really good foundational builds to bring into the raid to start. You can't go wrong with setups like this to start. You're going to have to adapt. The day one raid race, it is a marathon. It's all about making it to the end. And you're going to have to adapt and change things because you never know how these encounters are going to work. But I just wanted to go over the builds and loadouts. Didn't want to keep you here too long. Hopefully I didn't rant too much. But if you guys want to come and check out the day one raid race with me and my clan, follow me over on Twitch. We will be streaming all day tomorrow. Do not miss it. It's going to be a ton of fun. And I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I will always check it. I will try to get back to you as quick as possible. Or head over to the Twitch chat and let me know there. I will be talking with you all day long. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck in your day one raid race. I hope you get the clear. I hope you get the emblem. It's going to be a ton of fun.